Hello there and welcome back to another review. Now, this film is a weird one. This film is a real strange one. I'm going to be looking at Soy Hark's Time and Tide here today, uh, released by Eureka Classics. Um, it's, it's not a film I hate. Uh, but at the same time, it's not a film I love either. It stars Nicholas C and singer-songwriter Wu Bei, and it was made back in 2000. Um, it's not the film is bad, um, far from it. You know, it's a good movie, and there is that soy hark flair um, running through it. Um, but I just really do have trouble uh, making my mind up on this one. And I'll be trying to get into today as to why that is and my sort of problems that I have with the movie. Um, I believe this was the film that Soy Hart made after he made Double Team and Knock Off with Van Damme when he was trying to sort of attempt to be a director in America. Um, I will get round to reviewing some Van Dans, but as I mentioned, I've got so many films to get through. Uh, but yeah, he done Double Team and Knock Off with Van Dans. So I think this this film was very much sort of like a comeback or homecoming for Soy Hark into the world of Hong Kong movies. And like I say, almost like he, he you know, he was going back to his where he come from. He was kind of trying, you know, get back into the Hong Kong, you know, movie world. I know some people love this movie, and I do enjoy the, you know, the film. It's just I, there's something about this film where it almost it always feels to me like there's something off. There's something off about this movie. Um, I did read the original cut of this movie it was over three hours in length. When Hart cut it, he removed a lot of Tyler's and Anthony Wong scenes, which might explain why to me the film moment or like it almost jumps around a bit, and it even becomes confusing when it really shouldn't. Um, at its core, it is a simple movie, but it's it seems confusing when it has no need to be. Um, it, it's a really simple story. The only way I could describe this movie is frantic. I think that's one word that I could use to describe it. It is a frantic movie. Um, so much did Hark want Wu Bay in this movie that he rewrote a lot of these character scenes with him in mind. I think I read it was rewritten several times. Um, this, with the edits that happen in the movie and everything involved, I always got the feeling with this movie that Soy Hark is just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks, which does work uh, sometimes, but not all the time. Um, if you're not if you're throwing stuff at the wall and there's not a clear picture or a clear aim and a clear goal in mind, then you are literally just hoping that something will be good and it's you know and it it might pay off, it might not. But we will get into this today and hopefully over the course of the review, if you have seen this movie, you might understand sort of some of my problems um, I have with the film. One thing that did occur to me at the start is that it's very weird seeing the Columbia logo at the start of the, you know of a Hong Kong movie. Obviously, it was the Columbia that uh, distributed uh, this film. So the film starts with Nicholas C's character using like Genesis and this whole analogy of how God created man. The whole film has this notion of always running through it of um, sort of starting over again and second chances and things like that. Um, starting from scratch and in many ways one could look at that you know what that's what uh, Soy Hart was aiming for with this film then there was you know there was light you see someone with a cigarette talking about survival you see like a prostitute beating up a guy so it's a clever way to open the movie using them sort of parallels and similarities but um, with what's being said um, in the dialogue so Tyler is like this one night stand with this undercover cop and she gets pregnant. Then we flash forward nine months and the whole film is quite relentless in its pacing and editing. And I think that's what is fined off about the movie. Like it doesn't always flow as well as what it should. Um, it should flow any film should flow well but this film is it's very jarring in its editing. Like it skips around a little. Not you. It, it almost feels like every scene is cut a lot shorter than what it intended or what it meant to be. Um, and I say, and it, that's what I find off of it. Like it doesn't flow as well as it should. And it's, I say, it's a bit of a jarring experience. We meet Uncle G, played by Anthony Wong, who can help Tyler make money in like this bodyguard business. Tyler wants to run away and, like I mentioned, you know, have a fresh start. But he has a conscience and wants to support the woman he got pregnant. So Uncle G was sort of like a loan shark, and he started up this bodyguard business. And the people who employs this bodyguard business are not actually trained bodyguards, even though he tells everybody they are. But they're sort of like people that owe him money, and he's like, well, to pay that off you can sort of come and work for me to sort of give himself sort of a reputation as it were i love when they have to protect this woman and uncle g's like i say he's just feeling a loads of rubbish saying like how his men are specially trained and they've been through this training and things like that tyler at once in this movie drives her backward to the lady back to the backwards to the airport and then she then proceeds to go and throw up over a member of staff um, like sort of in the hospital we then catch this team being ambushed in sort of a mini john woo-esque um, type sequence um, group of mercenaries called the angels are our main antagonists in this film um, 
Tyler meets Jack, Blue Bay's character at this like pawn shop where he's trying to buy a gun and Jack is wanting a music box with a certain song in it. So due to sheer, just sheer coincidence, and there's a lot of plot uh, coincidences in this film, plot convenience as you were. So due, due to pure coincidence, Uncle G and Tyler are protecting the father of Wu Bay's wife who is pregnant and her father is like a big deal or something and these guys want him dead. I'm not even sure if it's even explained why they want this guy dead. But either way, this guy's a big deal. They want Wu Bei's wife's dad out of the way. Let's just let's just say that. Um, they catch this guy who was one of the waiters after a tip off that he is going to be like he is the hitman who's going to try and take out the guy. And then they get told that the tip off was bogus, even though it wasn't. So rather than like make it just doubly making sure like keep the guy in like their care anyway before they let him go. Or look, wait until the banquet and the feast is over, or at least get him in for questioning for the night, whatever it may be. They just let him go right away, right? They have this guy they suspect to be the hitman who's going to do the job, do the hit, do the kill. Um, they get told, like, the tip-off was bogus, even though it wasn't, and they just let him go. Rather than, like, covering all their bases, covering their bets, they just let, let, let this guy go. Not after the bank hit or when the night is over. Nope, they just let him go right away. Jack informs Tyler at this point that something is up and not right. So after averting the assassination, Tyler, Jack, and his wife randomly go shopping. And our two leads, for some reason or another, get a bit of a bromance going, even at one point having to sing song in the car. And that's the problem I have with this movie. Like, they have this idea that Jack and Tyler would like, sort of, they've got this bromance. And, they're, they'd, and the trouble is, that's all well and good. But it's like they bond so quickly out of nothing. Like, they get chummy and friendly for no reason whatsoever, like, very quickly. Just because they've met in a pawn shop. This guy was like going to assassinate his wife's dad, and then all of a sudden, they're Tyler, Jack, and his wife are going shopping together. Like they 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 they've known each other for years or something like that. So it does seem a bit forced. It does seem like we get to point C before we've even seen point B. If that makes sense, it's like it jumps. It gets there much quicker than what it should do. Um, we learn that Jack did or does work for the Angels. They're basically like, they're like the bad mercenary dudes and was like one of the best or something like that. And the whole film becomes all about this money that he takes from them. Um, they want Jack to kill his girlfriend's father-in-law. Instead, he kills the lead of the Angels and their second in command. Miguel is like our main bad dude here. Jack takes him out in this like car park where he sports a very nice wig and moustache to escape. You know, you can never fault uh, the classic disguises. When I say the film is manic, I mean, it, like I say, it is frantic. We have free fr freeze frames, CGI, rapid quick fire registering, and like I can't stress enough, even though the film is simple, for some reason it seems really complicated. Like, I've, I've read reviews of this, I know other people that have seen this, and they said, what, like... Why is it so confusing like when it doesn't need to be? I know, like I mentioned, some people love this film and it's not a bad movie, but it always feels like there's scenes missing or some scenes are cut a lot shorter, a lot quicker than what they should have been. So it, as I say, it just seems more complicated than it than it should be. So we get some nice stuff from Hark here, showing why he's so good at what he does. You know, we get flipping over escalators, kicks and dodges in laundry room. The whole time the bodyguards are trying to protect the angels. Um, Tyler goes after Jack, but Jack doesn't kill, it, kill him. Then Jack manages to somehow take a car that was right next to the angels that has loads of cash in it, whilst Uncle G is trying to perform CPR on the angels' boss because his bodyguard firm was sort of tasked with protecting the angels. Jack's trying to take out the angels, and then this money gets involved. Um, you know, we have a little fancy car chase around the car park, which doesn't go on overly too long. Um, so the client is dead, money is missing, Jack's gone rogue. Um, you know, what was the cash for? You know, what? there's this cash in the car. How long, like, what was the cash for? How long had he worked for the Angels? How did he meet his wife? Why are him and Tyler so chummy when they've known each other for all of five seconds? All these things. I mean, was the cash sort of protection money for the bodyguards? I mean, maybe I missed something. I don't know. So Tyler gets taken by police and the girl he got pregnant tries to bail him out. Jack drops his girl pregnant girlfriend off at her father's place so she will be safe um didn't they want to kill her father wasn't there people that wanted to take out her father so he drops his girlfriend at her father's place um are you sure she's going to be safe there jack are you sure that's probably the best place for her to go um to actually be safe 
And he give, Jack gives her like a key to a lockbox. Tyler tells Uncle G he knows Jack, finds out Joe the girl has gone into labour. The whole film has that very early 2000s vibe about it, you know, where CGI wasn't quite there yet. It wasn't quite as refined and um, as good as it is now. So there's some of the CGI which is used in this film. There's not a lot of it, but there is some. Um, it does look a little bit off. Um, if you remember like films from the early 2000s, late 90s, they were sort of using it. But it, even then it didn't look good and it definitely doesn't sort of hold up that well even now. Some films do, um, but not every film does. <coughs> um, so it's like, just got that early 2000s vibe going through. Angel's stalking out Jack's place and just so happens at the same time Tyler goes there. And what we get here is probably the best scene uh, in the whole of the movie in this like apartment uh, complex that um, where when Tyler goes to Jack and it's just it's so so Hong Kong movie making this bit I mean it really amazingly directed all the apartments in the complex and it's just like I say it's just the way it works I love how Jack sort of descends on this like grapple hook downwards all in one take um, like I said, some scenes in this movie are over too quick and scenes more complicated than it actually is. It's almost like, say, you feel you leave each scene too quickly. That's the problem. Not sure during this whole shootout where all the residents are if, or if anyone else got shot, but I guess that's neither here nor there because Jack and the Angles are just tearing up this joint, right? They're tearing it up the place. So Jack's place is full of gas and tells Tyler to hide in the fridge and it, you get a, it goes full on Kingdom of the Crystal Skull at one point. I mean, Hark is throwing the camera all over the place. We've got steady cam, CGI, overhead shots, close up shot. It's like a bit of a, it's a real assault on the senses a little bit, um, this film, especially in this scene. When at its core, as I say, it's just a random guy taking on this group that he used to work for and there's this money involved. That is basically it. And then there's this like forced bromance going on. It's nothing to do with the performances. The performances are fine. The direction for the most part is okay, but it just seems to just be all over the place. This is what this film is. I wouldn't say, I think just tone, it's not consistent. That is what it like gets good. And then it just sort of dips back down again. And it, I think that's the problem I have with time and tide. It just seems so off. It really does seem like it has the element of being absolutely brilliant. And then it shies away from it completely um you know so jack's wife goes to the station for the lockbox tyler gets a taxi there and the angels are there already by the way at this point in the movie you don't see uncle g anthony wong's character ever again he's just gone and he was you thought he's going to be a big part because he's sort of leading this sort of bodyguard business he just sort of disappears um they get to the station the police are also after tyler as he could they got his wallet from a taxi driver or something candy jack's wife's water breaks SWAT team turns up and suddenly the station is empty um, no one is around. Jack is there too, just slipping and sliding around under chairs and tables trying to take out the angels. Tyler is looking after Jack's wife and Jack asks, this is the grand opening of your new bodyguard business. How much, you know, how much to get my wife out of here? And Tyler says he'll do it free of charge. Again, why these two are so chummy, I do not know. Um, I mean, I know both have got someone pregnant and they both want a new life. So maybe right there, I've answered my own question. But you know they do have sort of similarities and i think that's what they were going for with this film to have two characters that were going through the same thing and sort of helped each other even though they're sort of not so much they're not 100 percent on opposite sides but they're working for like sort of two different people um tyler's character sort of he's freelance really anyway but he just gets caught up in this thing um so yeah he goes out of his way to sort of helps jack's wife um <laughs> But uh, I, I, I swear also, like, when Jack speaks to her, um, he, he asks, can you walk? And she nods and says yes. And the next shot, you see Tyler just trying, to, like, dragging her across the floor. I swear somebody at one point asks, can you walk? And she says she can. But the, the next shot, she's not walking at all, even though she said that she could. Um, so, like, sort of dragging her across the floor, she's going slow. This at the end is another reason why it can be confusing, because you have Jack in black, SWAT guys in black, and like you have the angels in black and not only that, but the angels are dressed up as the SWAT guys. So you've got three different entities all in black. Even one of them is pretending to be this other group who are also in black. So it can get quite confusing, like I say, when it doesn't need to. So Jack saves the lives of the police chief from being shot. So after this station bit, it randomly switches to like a music concert like the angels at this point. Do they want Jack dead? Do they want the money back? Do they want Jack dead and the money back? I don't know. So we have the cliche with the chief giving Jack a gun and he knows you should arrest him, but you have to help us. And 
you know, basically because, you know, you're the only man who can, one of them things. I think he says um, something like, you're the only one who knows their tricks. I think that's the line he uses. I mean, how many times in movies have we seen that? You're the only one, you know, that can do it. Um, so Candy is giving birth and Tyler has been basically reduced to temporary midwife at this stage. So Jack and Miguel have a fight in a walkway above this concert where Jack manages to kick a grenade back in his face. Um, so she gives birth. One of the angels finds them. Like, what do the angels have to achieve, though, by killing Tyler and Jack's wife? Like, what is there to gain from that? They they gain nothing from it at all. And that's what I'm saying. It's one of the... It, where the, When the film progresses and the longer it goes on, it's sort of, why are they... Why do they want Tyler dead? Why do they need to kill Jack's wife? I understand Jack's, like, gone rogue and he's turned his back on them, but I, I do not get why Tyler is sort of sometimes one of the people they want to kill. Um, so again, like I say, I, no, I, there's some things that don't make, you might watch this film and it makes total sense to you, right? You might watch this and absolutely love it. But to me, it just felt, like I say, off. It just, the, it, the whole film just feels a little bit off. And I've seen it a few times. Um, I've seen this film a good number of times now to give sort of a overall picture of the film. Um, just, you know, basically, a, you know, a synopsis of the film and just what, how it works and what I think about it. And as I say, just frantic jarring and just sometimes I, I hate the word but it's just a it's a, a bit messy uh this film i think it's a bit scrappy if you will um so she candy shoots that he comes in to kill her and tyler candy shoots him john woo style the chief gives jack three minute head start like to sort of get out of here like sort of after he sort of helped them the money i think the police get tyler and joe visit their newborn baby in hostel and there's a nice message to the film at the end like everything can start again no matter who you are what you're doing like the way the film starts so there, there was a rounded um picture there jack just disappears though no final shot of him or anything like that like i say it's a good film i just think it's far from a perfect film um it's not rubbish it's not terrible but it's a film that probably on paper was oh that that's awesome like we've got something there but like i mentioned earlier i think with the amount of rewrites that took place some of the editing is a bit too rapid um which i, I know fast editing is a big you know factor with hong kong movies but in this film it just seems like i say very off it seems very off like we leave each scene too quickly the, you know, the film and what's going on is a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And I really do think this is Soy Hart trying to be balls to the wall, trying to just throw everything at the camera, uh, like on film. And it does work sometimes, but like I said, when it should be getting good or you think it's getting good, it sort of goes sort of the opposite way, which is a real shame. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's just... You can't help but wonder if, like, the original three-hour cut of the film made a lot more sense, you know, with a lot more um, in the way in terms of scenes. Because I say some of it seems a bit forced, some of it seems a bit rushed. And there are moments where you think, how did that, why is that, and, you know, little bits like this. Which, But overall, the film is okay. Um, it's just, I wouldn't say it's one of Soy Hark's best. And say, if you love this movie, good for you. I just think it was a bit of a... Um, it's sort of a, a mishmash of a film that sort of tries to be something, tries to be something else, tries to tick all the boxes of everything else. And it just doesn't really pay off all the time, unfortunately. But it have to let me, if you've seen Time and Tide, let me know if you like the movie, if you didn't like the movie. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and what you reckon. But I just think it was a little bit of a missed opportunity and a tiny bit of a misfire, I think, from Soy Hark. Um, but it's still, it's still OK. It's still worth a watch. Um, but just to me, as I say, it was just a little bit, little bit off is the only way I could describe it. So thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review and I'll see you soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.